Hi and welcome back to Plug and Play EV and our review of the Top Don Pulse Q Home EVSE. It's a new home charger on the market and one that we got uh, sent complimentary courtesy of uh, Top Don for a review. So uh, this is our look at the uh, product out of the box, uh, how it performs on initial charges and general feel. So let's uh, jump into the review of the Top Don Pulse Q Home Charger. Okay, so opening up the Top Don charger here. Let's jump in, see what we get in the box. You see, Top Don Pulse AC Home, Pulse Q. Okay, so all well packaged, very neatly tucked in. If housing, just a protective bag. Lift that out. Already feels fairly solid, well built. Very thick cables here. Your instruction pack and the full length of the cable. Again, pretty thick. The J1772 plug at the end. And the NEMA 1450 up right there. And a wall piece with some mounting equipment. So fairly standard stuff, nothing out of the ordinary. We'll take a look at uh, what it all feels like right here. Okay, so from the box, clearly labeled top down with all the contact information. You see the UL listing right here. Move on to the main unit again. Feels fairly solidly put together, from what we can tell just right out of the box. It was only in a plastic covering, but the housing in the box itself was very secure. You've got your J-plug right here. The box with the standby power, presumably fault, and Wi-Fi, which we'll get into as we test. And then you've got your holster connector, some guides here to position it, the sticky guides. Some mounting equipment again for the holster. Mounting guide for the holster. A manual. Another quick start user guide. And the product inspection report. So, all pretty standard stuff, but good full look at what's in the box. Okay, so let's start off, logically enough, with the quick user guide. That's why people will start to uh, take a look. See what we've got. You've got a few pages, plug in installation, giving you distances using the template here to figure out the install with drilling and attaching it to the wall. comparisons here in size. This is uh, how my in-laws currently charge. They just use the mobile connector from the Tesla through to a 1450 outlet. And then that's the size of the uh, wire. So you can kind of see the difference there. This is much more like a standard extension cord. And this is your heavy duty getting up to the higher amperage gauge wire. So uh, you probably get Similar reach, I'll have to measure them out. But this is the Tesla connector, as you can see. We'll practice with the Tesla first, seeing as that's what it might be charging more often. But we have the J1772 to Tesla connector. They have one and we have one from Electron, I believe it was, that we tested a while back. I'll link the uh, product description for that up in the corner. But we will get this plugged into the Tesla first and see how it does compared to the usual connector. So that's the unboxing. A little background on the unit itself. So it has the standard cable, which is 16.5 uh, feet. Uh, that's coming in at a $599 price point. So right in line with a lot of the 40 amp, the prices at the moment, sometimes there are $50, $100 discounts on those, but uh, by and large that $500, $600 price point is where you're starting for this kind of equipment. 
Um, they do have a slightly longer extended version of the cable, which is 24.6 feet, and that's closer to a lot of the standards that come. Usually you're looking at this level between 20 and 25 feet of a cable. Obviously that depends. In some cases that'll be uh, required for you. In others you may just be right in the garage there and don't need to worry too much about it. So that'll come down to individual preference. Uh, there is a promotion at the moment on through to the uh, 31st of December 2022, where you pay the normal price and uh, there's a link which I'll put down in the description here that gives you $100 off once you've shown the installation in your home. So that's one thing that would uh, reduce the price for anyone looking to buy immediately. As a unit itself, it is uh, UL certified. So that's something a lot of people look for, for the safety certification. That's uh, a good sign that it's a solid unit and well manufactured to uh, certain levels. NEMA 4, which is uh, suitable for outdoor use and protection for intrusion of uh, water and a lot of things that you don't want in the unit itself. So the working temperature outside is uh, minus 22 to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're pretty all set there. That's going to cover pretty much everyone. In terms of weight, pretty solid unit, 15 pounds, 7 kilograms, a decent uh, chunk. And then you can adjust the current from uh, the maximum 40 amps all the way down to 6 amps if you wish. So there's a lot of variability there. Nice if you need that kind of uh, customization and to reduce the power. If you're taking it other places or if your home maybe can only do so much at one point and then you want to future proof it to ramp up to 40 amps when you get the ability to do so. Uh, it has uh, protection for under voltage, over voltage, um, short circuiting, leakage. So there's a bunch of things there that uh, just give you a little peace of mind. It does have a three year warranty with topped on. You'd have to dig into the various pieces of that to see what it covers and uh, whether it's right for your use case. But you know, it seems to be coming from a manufacturer who has a presence in the USA, who has contact points, um, who is obviously in the auto repair space and the diagnostic space so they have that uh, going for them but let's jump in and see how it did on the tesla and ionic 5 when we were over in cleveland okay so the tesla connector is going to reach all the way down to the back of the car here it's a pretty straight run so we'll see how long that is and that's how much we've got distance-wise. Then we go to our charging screen. Maximum on this is 32 amps. There we go, we're at a fairly high state of charge, 75%. So 32 amps, 236 volts. This is gonna give you 7.7 .7 kilowatts in terms of power. So this should be another couple of kilowatts faster if we can uh, pull out the full 40 amps. So we'll plug in the top don and see what we get by comparison. So for the sake of this, I'll just crank it up to the top. And that's just under three hours. So remember that number, two hours, 55 minutes, and we'll see how much faster the top done would be done if this is what we were trying to do, get to full charge. Not something you want to be doing super often, unplugging and replugging these higher power plugs. It's why they uh, talk about, you know, having it mounted and just kind of put it in once and leave it. But uh, this is your NEMA 1450, more modern standard dryer, outlet this is more of a useful thing here when we frequently come and charge take a look so immediately you get your power on light thicker cable we'll talk about that in a sec just to see what we get out of the charging here it's limiting it there to 30 no there it goes ramping up and that is because we've got the 40 amps out of this. There we are, successful from the Pulse Q home charger. It's not a huge amount, but we shave off about 30 minutes with that extra couple of kilowatts. And if that's the case, over 25% of the pack, you can see if we were coming from a very low state of charge and trying to get the full pack in there, you can multiply that out to save an hour or two of charging, depending on your state of charge. The Ionic 5, as we'll test, has a uh, 10.9 kilowatt max, so it won't max out the Ionic 5 either. Obviously, Tesla can go higher than this too, if you get a uh, suitably powerful charger and have the amperage at home. But this is a nice amount uh, if we can that's a good amount for it to be at right now, 25% taking two and a half hours. It means you can multiply that out by four and get your uh, 10 hour charge overnight um, if you were going from almost dead empty to 100%, which most people do not. So if we take this down to let's say 90%, there we go. So a charge setting of 90%, you'd have that done in just over an hour. So pretty nice. That's a good amount of power to be shoving in there. 
and uh, let's see what it looks like on the unit itself. When we see it charging, you'll have this successful blinking green light, red fault light if something is going wrong, and then the connectivity, which we'll have to try out in the app next. So charging happily at 85%. On the other side of this, we have this stop. Press that, this solid click. And you have the blue, which seems to indicate it's not charging anymore. Confirm that in the car. Correct, charging stopped. It got to 86%. So if you need to, for whatever reason, you can stop it via the charger unit itself. So overall thoughts on the Top Don Pulse Q home charger. Um, nice solid unit, obviously the packaging there was very robust and uh, out of the box you feel the solidity of the uh, unit itself very well housed. Solid cable, cable itself does need to be a bit longer I think for a lot of people you're, um, you know, we could move it around in that garage that you see there and it uh, gave us enough length but if you were trying to reach over to a second space like we had there or uh, out of the garage to charge a second DV or when you just wanted to be outside then that would uh, need some extra uh, length but something to note that uh, a lot of them come with 20 to 25 uh, feet of cable right out of the box but this is a 16.5 as the standard so as they come out of the box obviously you have them all coiled up it did feel a very stiff cable at first um, so that could be something that uh, people in colder climates would want to test so we'll come back as we uh, get into the colder months here and test how it uh, holds up to colder weather use the cable being frozen that kind of thing but uh, right off the bat is just something to consider along with the cable length um, but in terms of build quality and just taking it out of the box plugging it in and getting a charge right away no problems at all felt good build quality the housing and the uh, the kind of installation guide is really good there's a lot of um, stuff there to get you set up and uh, if you're putting that in as a permanent charger then it's going to be uh, with the mounting kits that you've got it's going to be very solid i think in terms of capability obviously you know essentially you're looking at the 40 amps max and uh, that's pretty common across that price point of 600 dollars, 700 dollars now um, but it did all that it needed to do you can adjust the amperage as you'd like um, in the ionic 5 we can't do that so that's a nice little feature to have via the app um, the Tesla, obviously, you could see that we could dial the amperage up or down from the car, so maybe that's not quite such a big deal. But that's where the software uh, ability really kind of ends in terms of our using it. Uh, we did get set up with the Wi-Fi, so it was useful to be able to see the charge, monitor the charge. But the app itself wasn't anything special, to be honest. You can kind of see um, the design needs some work. It was uh, not limited so much as a little bit clunky, you know, just not uh, a modern user interface. Um, and some of the features didn't quite get going for us uh, that's something again that we can test as we use it more and more but uh, right out of the box just wasn't uh, super impressed there's some of the stuff that you can use and if your ev doesn't have that that'd be handy and as i say the uh, setting the amperage is not something that we have in this car so that was a benefit but at the same time stuff like scheduled charging most evs can do that already we had it in the bolt ev we have it in the ionic 5 and uh, the apps are a little better changing the charge limit setting up your scheduled charging um, and a bunch of different things that probably will be a little more user-friendly in the vehicle manufacturers app than the uh, Top Don Pulse Q app at this point. And in terms of performance, you can see from the brief tests that we did on both the Tesla and the Ionic 5, uh, plugs in, works no problem at all, uh, hits that 40 amp max, uh, gives you a nice uh, little extra between that 32 and 40 amp level, as other units will do. But, um, you know, we, we can easily say hardware is very solid, company is respected, it's a good, solid addition to the charging market. The software and app side can be improved, so that may be something to monitor as you uh, move into 2023. You know, this is being recorded at the end of 2022, so worth noting that software can improve. They can release new versions of the app and uh, start to build on the functionality they've already got. So I like the uh, the product overall, and having it as an option uh, in Cleveland will be nice to, uh, to add to that Tesla mobile connector that uh, our in-laws use already. 
So that's our review of the Top Don Pulse Q home charger. Uh, do you have this unit? Do you have another 40 amp unit that you uh, like and recommend? Are you shopping for uh, an EVSE in the new year? How do you feel about this uh, 32 amps, um, 40 amps, and then future proofing? Obviously, we go all the way up to 80 amps, and there are some pretty beefy, almost uh, commercial grade chargers out there. Let us know down in the comments. Or oh, it's interesting to hear from owners. So if you do have the Pulse Q already, let us know how it's performing or what you're looking to. To get as you enter the uh, kind of holiday season here and uh, just a reminder that it does have that $100 off post uh, purchase so once you buy that if you use the link below in the uh, video here it's not an affiliate link it's just one of the offers they're running through to the end of 2022 so make sure you take a look at that if this was on your list already and to get $100 off for yourself so thanks as always for watching and we'll see you in the next one cheers